You better hold on tight, spider monkey. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 franchises Gen Z grew up watching. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Not bad, huh? Let's do it. For this list, we'll be looking at the most popular TV shows and movie franchises those of us born in the mid to late 90s and early 2000s grew up watching and adoring. If you could only watch one franchise for the rest of your life, which would it be? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Cars Franchise Pixar has had tons of hit franchises over the years, so it was difficult to narrow them down. Still, the phenomenon that is and was Cars is undeniable. Even though a series of animated movies about Cars seems like it would be targeted towards a specific age range of boys, Pixar managed to draw in a ton of different audience demographics. Last one to flows buys? I don't know. Why don't we just take a drive? Hmm. Nah. Yeah. Good job! Turns out there's a lot to be intrigued by in a world where vehicles can talk, and everyone fell in love with the world of racing for a bit. Lightning McQueen remains one of the most identifiable animated characters in pop culture to this day. Trying something new. I like it. Wow. Subtle. Figured if I'm gonna be your crew chief, I'd better do it in style. Number 19. Avatar The Last Airbender Franchise there are many Nickelodeon properties to love, but where Rugrats feels a bit more cherished by millennials, Avatar The Last Airbender is fondly remembered by the succeeding generation. Aang, stop! We're not allowed to go near it. The ship could be booby-trapped. If you want to be a bender, you have to let go of fear. It was one of the first cartoons to be serialized and to deal with heavier subject matter in a way that was digestible for kids. It knew we could handle the heavier stuff, and there's a reason it's still so frequently rewatched by many today. You see, you are too late. The comet is already here, and I'm unstoppable! While the subsequent The Legend of Korra didn't find quite as much success as its predecessor, we were still happy to be immersed in the ATLA universe again just four years after the initial show's end. Number 18. Scooby-Doo Franchise Scooby-Doo is certainly not exclusive to Gen Z, but our generation along with millennials were growing up during much of its resurgence. For one, the live-action, theatrical movies premiered in 2002 and 2004, and were often replayed on TV after that. For another, we saw tons of fantastic cartoon iterations, including What's New Scooby-Doo, which aired from 2002 to 2006, and Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which was on Cartoon Network from 2010 to 2013. The Mystery Gang is pretty timeless, and it's almost a requirement that you grow up watching some of their adventures if you're going to be an honorary pop culture fan later on. There's no way a human physique could wind its way through all those tripwires. Ta-da! <laughs> way to go, Scoob! But how'd you know to go over there? <laughs> I smell food. Number 17. Twilight Franchise There was a set of movies that had an entire generation fighting over vampires or werewolves, or perhaps more accurately, Robert Pattinson versus Taylor Lautner. Had a misunderstanding. There's nothing to worry about. Listen to you. Did you lie to get her out of town, too? Just leave. While we were probably too young to be reading the books, at the time that the first movie premiered in 2008, we were begging our parents to let us go see it. A saga that collectively spawned an entire generation's vampire and werewolves phase. We have nothing to say for it except for a whole lot of memes. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> Twilight was such a phenomenon, you couldn't go anywhere in elementary or middle school without overhearing talk of imprinting on babies. We can only imagine how that sounded to outside ears. You imprinted on my daughter? It wasn't my choice. She's a baby! It's not like that. Number 16. Teletubbies If you're a zillennial, you would have grown up with the original run of Teletubbies, which aired from 1997 to 2001. Bye-bye, Tinky Winky. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Dipsy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lala. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Poe. Bye-bye. Although it's originally from the UK, reruns continue to be broadcast all over the world. Which is why you might remember watching Teletubbies a little bit after 2001. This show was a whole fever dream. We struggle to make sense of the concept today, 
But all we know is four-year-old us couldn't get enough. Between Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe, the baby son, and the anthropomorphic vacuum cleaner, there was a lot to be entertained by, we think. <laughs> Number 15, Shrek Franchise. From the snuck-in bits of adult humor to the iconic lines in even more iconic voices, Shrek was a fan favorite among nearly everyone. That must be Lord Farquaad's castle. Uh-huh, that's the place. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? It pulled in every kid with gross-out comedy, coupled with the awesomeness of fairy tale characters and tired storylines flipped on their head. The writing in every movie is unbelievably witty, and even though we weren't yet seasoned enough to judge, we knew good when we saw it. Plus, those banger soundtracks don't hurt either. If they rolled out the TV cart to your class on a rainy day, chances are you were having a vote between Shrek or Kung Fu Panda. Truly a decision no child should have to make. You? <laughs> Him? He's a panda. You're a panda. What are you gonna do, big guy? Sit on me? <laughs> Don't tempt me. Number 14, Pokemon Franchise. Real ones remember the Pokemon card trading days. Soon after, one of pop culture's catchiest theme songs would hit the airwaves, and a generation of late millennials and Gen Zers would forever be singing about being the very best. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause. The fact that the series is still going on today is a testament to how much the franchise means to so many. It's stuck with us all the way into adulthood, and we're happy to know that future generations will also get the opportunity to have Ash and Pikachu around in their childhood. We choose you, Pokémon! Pikachu! <laughs> Number 13, Spider-Man Franchise Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. Like Scooby-Doo, lots of generations grew up with Spider-Man. He's probably the most famous superhero of all, next to Batman and Superman. Our parents and older siblings grew up with the cartoons and comics, but we were the generation who got to see a live-action Peter Parker hit the big screens for the first time. Well, okay, our parents and siblings got to see it too, but we were the ones growing up associating Tobey Maguire with the web-slinging hero. The trilogy aired from 2002 to 2007, which was prime-time juice box trading and yellow school buses for many of us. If you're born a bit later into Gen Z, then you probably consider Andrew Garfield your Spider-Man. Those movies were a lot of fun, too. Just let me go. Is that a knife? Uh, is that a okay. real knife? Yes, it's a real knife. My weakness. It's small knives. Just let me go. Anything but knives! Oh. oh, it's so simple. Number 12, Star Wars Franchise. Admittedly, many of us were introduced to this franchise by our parents or older relatives. We may not have been around to see the OG movies in theaters, but we certainly watched them at home over and over and over. Nothing can stop that now. Just for once, let me look on you with my own eyes. By the time Disney acquired the property, we were pretty much all caught up and eagerly waiting for the sequel trilogy with our butts in cinema seats and a large popcorn in our laps. This is one of those franchises that unites several generations across the board in a way that few others manage to do. People are counting on us. The galaxy is counting on us. Solo, we'll figure it out. We'll use the Force. That's not how the Force works. <laughs> Number 11, Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Come to negotiate, eh? Have you, you slimy git? Look what I got. I got a jar of dirt. I got a jar of dirt. And guess what's inside it? The Pirates of the Caribbean franchise originates from a Disney theme park attraction and dates back quite a while. But it didn't really make an appearance in our lives until its first theatrical release in 2003. From then on, we were forever looking forward to seeing Captain Jack Sparrow board his ship and grace our screens. Johnny Depp gives himself fully to the role, and it made us wholly believe in his world and his character. With three movies spanning the aughts and two more following, Pirates of the Caribbean has been with us from our waddling stage right up until the end of our teen years. I have a rendezvous beyond my beloved horizon. 
Number 10, Winnie the Pooh franchise. When there is no honey, the Pooh takes the tummy wherever the honey will be. My friends are out there with honey to spare and they will take care of my tummy. Here's another franchise that has spanned generations and made it all the way to ours. There's something so gentle and comforting about the characters and their storylines. Maybe it's the cartoonish voices reminiscent of a time we weren't yet around for, or the soft color palette of the cozy woodland home, or, probably most accurate, the compassionate and uplifting wisdom these characters have to offer. No, oh, silly old bear. <sighs> You're braver than you believe, and stronger than you seem. <sighs> and smarter than you think. Winnie the Pooh, regardless of precisely the shows or series of movies you grew up with, always feels like a warm hug. It probably helps that Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet and company all look like super cuddly stuffed animals. Number 9, Dora the Explorer franchise. Dora, Dora the Explorer. If you're not humming the theme song right now, you can go ahead and click off this video. To this day, there's something so nostalgic about seeing the original animation of Dora the Explorer. With a cast of absolutely iconic characters, this felt like children's media at its best. A monkey wearing boots, a backpack that comes to life, and the kind of incessant fourth wall breaking that would eventually prepare us for the likes of Deadpool. Plus, this queen taught our five-year-old selves all the Spanish we knew. In English, we say, kick the ball. In Spanish, we say, patea el balón. In 2019, a live-action Dora movie was released, and it felt like maybe they should have just directly addressed Gen Z in the advertising. Add us next time, Paramount. Can you say delicioso? Say delicioso! She, she'll grow out of it. Number 8, SpongeBob SquarePants franchise. While we grew out of shows like Dora the Explorer, which were geared toward younger audiences, SpongeBob's humor kept up with ours even as we got older. There's a reason so many memes are derived from the show. How are you two making those noises? Well, that's easy. All you need is a box. And imagination. Miraculously, the franchise is still going strong. With four additional films announced in 2022 and slated for release over the next few years, it looks like we'll have to share SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, and Krabs with the generation under us. And we're all for it if it means the answer to the question, who lives in a pineapple under the sea, won't soon be forgotten. Can't hear you! Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Number 7, Marvel Cinematic Universe. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Let us take you back to a simpler time. You spent your childhood reading comic books, and now you're sitting in a movie theater with your parents, ready to watch it all unfold on screen for the first time. By the time the credits roll, you're thinking Iron Man might just be the coolest superhero ever, thanks to RDJ. Truth is, I am Iron Man. And then you keep going back to the theaters to watch all your favorite heroes get their screen time, until finally, the ambition that was the first Avengers totally blows your mind. There really was nothing like seeing the Avengers assemble for the first time. Even back then, we knew we were witnessing something special. If those opening credits still manage to give you goosebumps all these years later, you're not alone. Number 6, Sesame Street Franchise Sesame Street might just be the most popular children's TV show of all time. At the very least, it's certainly one of the longest running. All oh, the cheese! I, I gotta check and see if the cheese is ready. Oh, cheese! You need not worry. As long as Sam the Eagle is here, I shall protect you in the name of decent family entertainment. There are few rosters of kids' characters all as equally iconic as the Sesame Street's Muppets. From Bert and Ernie, to Elmo, to the Cookie Monster, to Big Bird, to Oscar the Grouch, to Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy, the list of fan favorites is practically endless. With a slew of memorable musical numbers, adaptations, and guest appearances, the Sesame Street franchise has cemented itself in the media world far beyond just kids' programming.
Number 5. Toy Story Franchise Pixar did a fine job of shaping our childhoods and probably in no grander way than with the Toy Story lineup. Every kid dreams of their toys coming to life, and the premise was not only incredibly solid on its own, but also fantastically executed. <laughs> now, Buzz, what could Andy possibly get that is worse than you? We grew to care so deeply for Woody, Buzz, and the gang over the years that by the time Toy Story 4 came out, we were mostly adults there in the crowd, bouncing in our seats with the same glow in our eyes we watched the first installment with. These movies always treated their young viewers with grace and esteem. The real-life hardships like growing up and saying goodbye were never sugar-coated. So long, partner. The only constant in life is change, and Toy Story made the bittersweetness of it manageable. He's not lost. Not anymore. To infinity and beyond. Number 4. Barbie Franchise You rescued us from his dungeon, your bravery led to his defeat, and your kiss has broken his spell. You are the Sugar Plum Princess. Barbie Media might have had a leg up given that its toy brand was already monumentally popular, but it's definitely earned its spot on our list. Did you even grow up in the early 2000s if you weren't constantly re-watching Barbie classics? We're talking Barbie in the Nutcracker, Barbie of Swan Lake, Barbie as the Princess and the Popper, Barbie Fairytopia, and Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus. And that's barely scratching the surface. Will you keep this safe, your highness? I would be honored. It will be the first star you see each night. The utter magic in these movies always made us feel like we could be anything too, just like Barbie. The idea of combining our favorite doll with princess narratives? We were practically bouncing off the walls, man. Number 3. Harry Potter Franchise A full-bodied Patronus is the most difficult to produce, but shield forms can also be equally useful against a variety of opponents. Fantastic, Jenny! Ah yes, the franchise millennials love to gatekeep. We're just kidding, sort of. Admittedly, Harry Potter was theirs first, seeing as the first book was released in 1997 and many of us were still in diapers at the time. With that said, the movies aired from 2001 to 2011, and by then, Gen Z was cognizant enough to appreciate the feats of being a wizard and the utter disappointment of being a muggle. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard, and a thumping good and I'd wager, once you trade up a little. To this day, you'll often hear the age-old question, what Hogwarts house are you in, in casual conversation. And it's always nice to hear that the fandom is still alive and thriving. This franchise is a hallmark of so many childhoods, and one that stamped itself into pop culture for what will, at this point, presumably be all eternity. We're gonna make them proud, Neville. That's a promise. Number 2. Mickey Mouse and Friends Franchise Disney is probably the number one company responsible for the magic of our childhoods. While we would have loved to include all the Disney Channel media, there are just too many to name, so we're sticking with the classics. They really are the heart of Disney. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, and Pluto are as iconic as they come. All right, everybody, prepare to dive! Engines, go ahead! Aye, aye, Captain Mickey! They've definitely gone through a few revamps since their inception during Hollywood's golden age, both in appearance and personality, but the essence of their character still feels true enough to their beginnings. Who among our generation isn't familiar with a Goofy movie, the Christmas anthology films, the Three Musketeers, and of course Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and its absolute banger of a theme song? It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Blue's Clues franchise. Blue Skidoo, we can too. We just figured out Blue's Clues. We just figured out Blue's Clues. We just figured out Blue's Clues. Because we're really smart. The Powerpuff Girls franchise. The phrase, sugar, spice, and everything nice is permanently imprinted in our brains. So once again, the day is saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I just love these stories where you laugh and learn. My Little Pony franchise. Generation 3 began in 2003 with revamped toys and a lineup of direct-to-video movies. And knowing you shared something you all love, 
makes it a very, very special charm bracelet. I will cherish it and your friendship forever. High School Musical franchise. Some of us can still quote every lyric. Ice Age franchise. This scene still lives in our heads rent free. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Disney Princess Franchise while there are Disney franchises we love that aren't considered Disney princess movies, like The Lion King, there are, once again, far too many to count off. If you asked any young kid in the mid-90s and onward what their favorite Disney princess was, you were sure to get a decisive, enthusiastic answer, zero hesitation. Whether you admired Jasmine's independence or aligned with Mulan's fighting spirit, or saw yourself in Ariel's sense of wonder, we all had a princess we would have loved to emulate. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free, wish I could be part of that world. The franchise has since expanded wonderfully to focus on more diversity and love stories that don't rely on being rescued by a prince. And even now that we're technically grown, we can't wait to see what's next. Have you ever had true love's kiss? Ew, barf! Do you have daddy issues? I don't even have a mom! Neither do we! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.